Hey everyone, thank you for joining this talk that is titled Resilient Data, Exploring Replication and Recovery in Apache Ozone. So a little bit about me. My name is Sadaran Chennai. I am working as a software engineer at Cloudera. And for the past three years, I've been contributing to Apache Ozone and also a committer at this project. So without further ado, let's get started. To set some stage here for this presentation, imagine this scenario. So let's say you're running a mission critical application that stores enormous amounts of data. Everything is going smoothly and your team is basking in the glory of success. But suddenly what happens one day is a disaster strikes, a certain hardware failure, a catastrophic software bug, or even a natural disaster strikes, threatening, threatening to bring your system down, system crashing down. In such, such situations, what, what can save us from data loss or system downtime? The answer lies in building resilient data infrastructure. And today, we're going to explore how Apache Ozone solves this problem. So let's quickly go through the contents of this talk. So uh, firstly, I'll be introducing uh, Apache Ozone for those unfamiliar. And we'll also go through the architecture of Apache Ozone, uh, such, as the, uh, such as the components uh, in Apache Ozone and how they interact with each other. We will also talk about a uh, container repli features such as container replication, high, high availability, and uh, how Ozone recovers from failures that we just talked about here. The latter part of the talk will basically deal with the backup and recovery strategies strategies that ozone has or ozone provides in order to recover from failure such failure situations we will also talk in detail about a recent feature which was apache uh, which was that was introduced in apache ozone around ozone snapshots which also helps or the cause of disaster recovery or recovering from a failure here so let's quickly start the talk. So to for those unfamiliar, Apache Ozone is nothing but a distributed object store that is capable of handling billions of objects. So it is an open source project which was uh, it started as a Hadoop sub project but now it is a top level project. So it it was basically developed uh, when things started to uh, scale up in HDFS and we obviously know the infamous small file problem when the number of files grew beyond certain threshold or certain amount of the HDFS name not started to choke up. So in order to solve this problem of the small file problem and a lot many things, Ozone has a lot many things to offer now, now that we have the project. So the main problem that HDFS faced was that it, the name node was the single place for all the for handling both the namespace and the block space. It also continuously got block reports from the data nodes. All data nodes reported to it. It also had to handle the namespace and many other things. So everything was handled by a single component, which is the name node. But the Ozone, how it's uh, how Ozone solves it is by separation of the namespace and the block space. The namespace is handled by a separate component called the Ozone Manager and the block space is handled by a separate component called the storage container manager. And we have a separate unit called the container here instead of the blocks. I mean, we have blocks too, but a bigger block or a bigger, uh, a bigger block is called a container in uh, Ozone. It is different from the Docker container that we usually talk, but a uh, container is nothing but a bigger block. Uh, the default size of a container is 5 GB. So, uh, so if, so the, uh, the fundamental idea here is that uh, a greater unit will reduce the number of reports or the, the quantity of reports that it sends to the uh, name node or here in the sense here it, in the context of Ozone, it will be the storage container manager. A bigger unit will uh, send less quantities of reports to the storage container manager and it can, uh, the storage container manager can easily handle this number of reports. So accessibility, coming to how you can access Ozone is, Ozone can be either used as a pure object store or you can also use it as a file system. So uh, when we think, when we talk about uh, uh, Ozone as a as a continuation of HDFS, we need, uh, HDFS was generally a 
is a naturally a, naturally a file system. So ozone also provides its flavor of the its offering of file system layer on top of its on top of its object store layer. So uh, we have two flavors of um, file systems currently in ozone. One is the O3FS, which is the bucket rooted file system, and the global file system view, which which is the um, OFS. And uh, since it is an, it can be used as an object store too. We also have the capability for S3 clients to write to this object store via the S3 API. And uh, we also have a component called S3 gateway through which the clients can interact with Ozone. S3 clients can interact with Ozone. Let's move forward. So let's quickly go through the architecture of Apache Ozone. So like I said, Ozone can be accessed either by uh, an S3 client, a file system client, a file system client, maybe anything in the Hadoop ecosystem, such as a Hive or a Spark, and they interact. They generally need a HCFS layer or a Hadoop compatible file system layer to interact with the underlying storage. So users can either choose any of them. Ozone also has an inbuilt client that is the Ozone SH client that is that comes along with the ozone um, and you can also use the shell client to interact with ozone. So you can either use the file system, the shell or the S3 client. You can use a load balancer to load balance your request to the S3 um, client here. The, the request first reaches the ozone manager here. So the uh, to give a general idea of how a request or a write travels through the system, is that uh, right first hits the ozone manager and the ozone manager stores or the stores the metadata of that right so let's say you're writing a key so ozone manager has this so ozone has this concept of uh, volumes buckets and keys and if you're let's say you're writing a key and uh, what happens is ozone manager first stores its metadata within itself so uh, ozone manager after writing its metadata it requests the sem SCM or the storage content manager to give a set of data nodes to which it needs to write the data or the underlying blocks of that key to. So once the storage content manager uh, decides or uh, decides as to which data nodes or which set of data nodes to write those keys to, when I mean a set of data nodes is purely for the purpose of replication, a set of replication with a given replication factor is logically called a pipeline. And the storage content manager will form a pipeline of data nodes write the blocks of the key to, and it will first create a container and write all the blocks of that key to that pipeline. And once that is done, uh, I mean, once the storage content manager decides to uh, write the key on this pipeline, it will give the information of the uh, pipeline to the ozone manager to allocate blocks to, and uh, the ozone manager will inform the client or give the output stream object to which the client can write to, to the uh, client and client can write directly to the pipeline or interact directly with the data nodes here. This is how uh, the architecture of ozone in general is. We also have a like an observability for observability and uh, analytical purposes. We also have a special component called the recon server. So it is it is basically a bird's eye view of the entire ozone uh, uh, ozone and the distributed system. It, it contains information such as the number of keys, volumes, and buckets in the system. Also has uh, it's also it's like a uh, an observability tool to observe the state of multiple components such as ozone manager and storage container manager. Uh, there have been uh, very recent improvements to this project that has been happening in this space. So uh, it's great that uh, this uh, recon is getting so it's getting better now. So uh, beginning, starting to talk on replication. So replication is a fundamental technique which is required for safeguarding data against loss, right? So it's the process of maintaining multiple copies of data or services across different nodes that offers several benefits, such as improved fault tolerance, reduced latency, et cetera. However, I mean, when you talk about when we talk about replication, obviously it brings the challenges of consistency, how three replicas or how many of our replicas can stay consistent um, with each other. 
So, and synchronization, consistency, these are the problems that it also brings to. But the main idea is to um, reduce fault, or to increase fault tolerance and to increase availability and durability of the data. So, uh, Ozone obviously provides uh, different types of replication. A uh, recent feature went in, it also separate, provides, apart from three way replication, it also provides the feature of the erasure, erasure coding through which we can reduce the amount of data that is written in the storage. So, uh, so containers are three-way replicated by default and distributed consensus is achieved through RATIS. So when we, when we say we need to maintain uh, consistency across the nodes, the distributed com consistency comes to save the picture here. And distribution consensus is achieved through the RAF protocol, which is kind of offered by an Apache project called Apache Ratis. It is a library that is based on the RAF protocol and each uh, data node or yeah is part of a, a RAF ring or a RAF client. It is a, uh, it has a RAF server and it will basically handle the problem of the consistency and uh, distributed consensus. So pipe, like I already said, pipelines are a logical group of the data nodes that are chosen for replicating a container. So when if the client gets the output stream to write to these data nodes, it basically buffers the data up to a certain threshold and writes in unit called chunks. So the default value is 4 MB. To, so till 4 MB, if let's say the client is writing a 10 MB file, it will buffer it till 4 MB and write uh, two chunks, 4 MB, 4 MB of each. And the last chunk would be of 2 MB after which the close would be called. So the flush would happen at the interval of 4 MB, which is called a chunk in Ozone. So chunks, so if you see the hierarchy of these units, chunks is the least, and the bigger unit is the block, and the largest unit is the container, as you can see in this, direct, in this diagram also. So let's go ahead. So apart from replication, which is for worker nodes to uh, uh, increase data durability. We also have the feature of high availability for the master nodes too. So high, high availability is also an important feature as we, uh, as we, if we don't have it, we will have a, the, the case of a single point of failure for each uh, node. So uh, both ozone manager and storage content manager play an important role in maintaining and um, durability of the data and availability. So. Uh, so both ozone manager and storage container manager are highly available today and and they have they support we support both ha and non ha configurations so what we do is mainly both these components so scm and om have stored their internal state in uh, in this embedded database called the rocksdb so each scm or each om has its own rocksdb to maintain its metadata and that RocksDB is replicated across its the three replicas or three, three, three nodes here. And what happens is the principle of RATIS is that a leader is selected at configured intervals. There is a leader election that happens and it is responsible for handling reads and propagating writes to the followers. So first the write would go to the leader. The leader would then propagate it to the followers. And once a majority of the write is committed, or the append entries are committed, it will return the response to the client and the client will then acknowledge it and then the write will be complete. This is how the write would complete in a highly available system. You can see here that what I already said, the SCMs are three-way replicated here. Each SCM has a RATIS server and uh, the internal state is stored in RocksDB. So recovering from failures. Recovering from failures, how does Ozone recover from a failure here? So like what happens in HDFS, similarly, data nodes also heartbeat to the SCM here and send container reports. So whenever, uh, it, let's say, a, a data node uh, uh, dies off or uh, something happens to a data node and it does not send the report to the SCM, so SCM detects this unresponsiveness and then closes the pipeline. So even if the other two nodes in the pipeline are alive and doing well, the SCM will close this pipeline as it detected in this unresponsive. So containers and 
data nodes on the closed pipeline. So once the pipeline is closed, what eventually happens is the containers on that pipeline also get closed and new pipelines are formed with other held DTMs. So SCM is also alerted when the node or a volume space is approaching its full capacity. So let's say your um, the node space or the space on the node or the volume to which the container is getting returned to is uh, uh, is approaching its full capacity or the disk is full. In this case also SCM gets note reports from the data node. So it also is aware of the of such uh, such characteristics that can cause failures and SEM immediately rec recognizes that uh, via the container reports and the node reports that something is fishy here and then it will um, instruct the data nodes to close the pipeline and the closing the pipeline will eventually lead to the container close and it also has a pre uh, preemptive checks to when it selects the pipeline. So when, even when it selects the pipelines, it carefully chooses the data nodes on its pipeline that contain enough volumes or enough space. Yeah. Coming to replication manager. So it, replication manager is an important component in the SCM that plays a role in maintaining desired replication deliver for closed containers. So whenever we say closing the pipeline leads to closed containers. So once the pipelines are closed, if, if there is some uh, uh, event that leads to the um, removal of these closed containers or the such as the node failure, et cetera, uh, replication man manager is a component that makes sure that uh, the desired level, desired number of replicas are present. So let's say it detects that out of three, three components or three container replicas, one of them is missing. It will initiate a move or a copy to fulfill the criteria of three also it also in case of over replication it will try to remove the extra replica that is unnecessary so it kind of maintains the desired replication travel here so coming to the latter part of the talk which is the uh, which has which is various backup and recovery strategies that ozone provides one of them is trash so ozone provides a file system trash, which is a mechanism to prevent accidental deletion of files and directories. So it is enabled at the bucket level. So each bucket, if you look at each bucket, it contains a trash directory. And whenever you delete a file inside a bucket, the file, if trash is enabled, the bucket, the file goes to the trash. So this is a mechanism that prevents or provides an opportunity to the user to prevent uh, an accidental deletion. So it has a configurable retention period and checkpoint intervals. So you can set the trash interval. Let's say you set the trash interval to 10 days. You can also set the checkpoint interval to one day. So after 10 days, your uh, files would get deleted and the checkpoint are nothing but um, kind of day-wise uh, directories for to identify which checkpoint did this file get deleted at. So let's say your checkpoint interval is one day and the trash interval is 10 days for a and you deleted a key, then there would be 10 checkpoints created for that key. So that is how it would work. Okay, coming to the second offering that Ozone provides one is the uh, support for cross cluster replication. So Hadoop provides a tool that is called DCP which is short for distributed copy. It's a utility provided by Apache Hadoop for copying large amounts of data between multiple Hadoop compatible file systems. So it is de designed to efficiently handle the copy, copying of large data sets in a distributed and a parallel manner. So Ozone also supports this DCP and you can use Ozone, use DCP to replicate multiple Ozone clusters and use it as a backup strategy. It kind of, it supports all different types of buckets. So um, some time back, the concept of bucket types was introduced in Ozone. So there are basically three types of buckets currently. One is the file system optimized buckets, which is uh, which contains the features, which has the feature of atomic renames. So whenever you rename a directory or delete a directory, it provides the feature of atomic renames for that, such that it does not iterate through all the subparts. The, the the operation will be carried in big off one time. So this is uh, for FSO and for OBS. OBS is nothing, is nothing but an object store bucket. 
So uh, object store buckets are meant basically uh, for the purpose of pure object store purpose, just like we earlier said that ozone can be used as an object store too. So it uh, if you have an S3 client or an object store client that is writing that requires the purpose of an object store, you can use the OPS bucket here. And with the earlier buckets that were created prior to this bucket types feature are called legacy buckets. So all buckets are supported by DCP. So for to, uh, to support replication of OBS buckets, we need to use the S3 file system because currently we have a um, the OFS or the uh, file system that Ozone provides does not work on uh, OBS buckets as uh, OBS buckets can have different paths that have contain slash and we need to normalize them accordingly. So we can use the S3 file system for OBS bucket replication here since it identifies paths, flat paths. And we also have file system, file checksum support to maintain data integrity. So we were, this was also a feature that was introduced some time back, which was, which can provide the checksum capability even helpful for application and the CP. So let's say if you are copying uh, uh, two files, uh, two files incrementally, first time you increase, uh, first time you copy one file and second time you're copying a, 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 another file, you wrote another file on the source and you want to copy the other file. But how file checksum comes into picture is that the first file checksum will be matched with the, um, the first file checksum on the target. And if it matches, then the copy would be avoided. And it would be a, a kind of um, incremental replication here. So, okay, coming to the snapshot feature that was recently introduced in Ozone. So what is a snapshot? A snapshot is nothing but a point in time copy of the state of the object store. It is an immutable copy. So it is a read, um, read only, uh, so currently we have only read only snapshots, so it is immutable in nature, and you can uh, to capture the point in time copy we of the object store we call it a snapshot. So it is implemented using the RocksDB's checkpointing feature that we have. So checkpointing is a feature in RocksDB which provides the ability to take snapshots uh, in a RocksDB database. So it is a it can be opened as uh, so checkpoints which can be used as a point in time snapshot can be opened in read only mode to query rows as a, as a point of time or as a writable snapshot by opening it read write so we are using checkpoint feature of rocksdb here to support it so it, that too is implemented at the bucket level and supports all types of buckets let's move forward Yeah, so Ozone Manager is responsible for storing metadata and uses RocksDB. Like we earlier said, Ozone Manager maintains this internal state or internal metadata in its RocksDB. And uh, different types of information, such as the keys, buckets, and uh, keys, buckets, volumes, etc., are all stored in different column families in its RocksDB instance. Uh, and uh, so basically, coming to RocksDB, what is the RocksDB? It is nothing but an LSM tree based engine. It is an open source high high performance embedded key value store. So it is actually based on level DP, which is a lightweight key value store created by Google. So the LSM tree, what happens is an LSM tree is op it operates on the principle of batching, batching write operations in memory and then periodically merging these batches uh, within an on disk structure. So when we periodically merging these batches in the on with the on disk data structure. Um, the primary motivation behind this LSM trees is to reduce the overhead of frequent disk writes. So basically it piles up the um, different uh, operations in memory and then a flush would happen. And this flush would lead to a file called the SST file or the sorted string table. The, the operations or the uh, writes would, you know, the keys would be sorted according to a given order or a configurable order. And uh, once the uh, limit is reached, or the mem table image is reached, uh, the flush would create this SST file on the disk. 
So creating a rocks DB checkpoint creates nothing but a consistent copy of the current DB state by hardening existing SSD files. So if you look at a uh, the hard uh, look at the structure of the rocks DB directory, it contains nothing but a couple of SSD files within it. And when you try to create a rocks DB checkpoint, it nothing but creates a consistent copy of that DB. And you can see when you, uh, that it creates a hard link of these existing SSD files. So it would, it would not be exactly a copy unless the um, the DB or the checkpoint is in another directory. So uh, it would just be a hard link here. So if you can see here, so we have created a snapshot in Ozone. So these are the commands that we used Ozone as a snapshot create on volume one and on actually a bucket one. And the name of the snapshot is snap3 here. And if you try to look at the snapshots here, you can uh, uh, look at the checkpoint directory. And if you look at the structure of the checkpoint directory, like I already said, you can see the number of SSD files inside it. And uh, it is nothing in these, all, all these files are nothing but hard links of the files in the actual active DB. So this is how the snapshot feature works here. So coming to application of snapshots. So the, the key application of snapshot is when you try to re, uh, replicate it incrementally and for backup and disaster recovery purposes. So it is a major tool in the, uh, or a major tool or in the field of incremental or replication or DR. The CP can be used to replicate data incrementally using ozone snapshot. So, uh, now the CP provides a way to use HDFS snapshots to in HDFS we had this feature of snapshots so you can provide the snapshots of let's say you want to um, just copy the difference between the snapshot one and snapshot two in HDFS uh, and you the CP if you provide this argument of uh, snap diff or the snapshot uh, with the update flag. Uh, you can the, uh, the CP will intelligently calculate the difference between those snapshots and copy only the diff to the target. So the similar ozone now also supports this feature. So what ozone will do is the same thing. It will uh, create a snap diff. The CP will call uh, get snapshot diff and on ozone file system, and ozone will uh, calculate the diff of the uh, diff of the between the snapshots, and the CP will construct its copy list based on the diff and accordingly uh, copy only the changed files and if the if the files are not added or if the files are just renamed or deleted the files won't be copied again but instead a uh, dcp understands that these are renames or deletes and um, applies those transactions in this step called the dcp sync which is a step which is used to sync the source and the target. So if there it contains the rename or delete operations, then the operations will be applied on the target. So any modifications or creates will be then added to the copy list for application. So that is how the app the snapshots can be used for incremental application here. So these are basically various backup strategies that Ozone provides in order to be more fault tolerant and uh, provide uh, better recovery mechanisms as a as a, as a distributed or as a good distributed system. So I think this would be the end of the talk. Yes. So thanks for listening, tuning into this talk. Um, for any uh, for any questions on Apache Ozone, please write to uh, the, the the mailing list which is dev at ozone dot apache dot org, or you can contact me for any further questions. Thank you for joining this talk.